I just built a really weird but probably pretty awesome web experience. So this cube here is actually tracking my face. I'm using TensorFlow to track the position of my face and that gets translated onto the rotation of the cube which means that if I go to the left I can watch the cube from the left and if I go up I can watch the cube from above. And that feels really weird, but also it feels pretty good. And I think this opens up to some cool possibilities on building a portfolio site. And if you choose to follow along this video, I would be happy to see you become a subscriber to the channel and click the thumbs up button. Let's go. Whoa, whoa. I think I might be a genius. All right, so let's get into the coding part. Here are the four steps we're gonna take to build out this. We're gonna look at the boilerplate, which is uh, just a create next app. And then I have some old code from uh, face tracking using TensorFlow. So I created a module out of that that we're gonna look at. And then we're gonna build a face tracking component that will render out a video tag that can uh, show the stream of the webcam, which then the machine learning can take the output of that, put it into a canvas and then analyze that canvas and find where the face is inside of these video images. And the last part, once we get some output from the face tracker where the face is, we need to use that position and rotate a 3D cube so that it adapts to where the eyes are looking from. And then we should have a really cool 3D effect. And this is what it looks like for starters. We have nothing. But we do have this face tracker module. Uh, yeah, we can also look at these imports because I am using TensorFlow. So we need TensorFlow Core, TensorFlow Converter, the TensorFlow WebGL backend. And then we have a model that is pre-trained for face tracking that's called BlazeFace. So we import those and then inside the module, we instantiate, we load in the model. Uh, and then we search for the camera and we take the stream of that camera, puts it in the, to the video tag and then we set the width and height of that tag according to the, the camera width and height, the dimension of the camera video stream. And we also have a canvas uh, that we're gonna use as input to the actual TensorFlow model. So once we instantiate this, we will be able to call this function get face position, and that will return us two coordinates uh, that will give us where in the image the face is. So that's what we're going to use. This function we will use at an interval. We can uh, we can check off. We looked at the boilerplate, which is Next.js, just uh, create Next.js app. And then we looked at the face tracker module. So now we're going to start to build the face tracker component. So I'll create a components folder and in there We'll create a component called face position. All right, so we have the component that just returns a video tag with ID video, and we put autoplay to true, and that is because we're going to put a stream object on this video tag, and then it needs autoplay true. So we want something to happen when this component mounts. So I'll do a use effect. And let's log here. We are going to call and get the face position on an interval. So let's create an interval. And we want to do it 60 times a second. Uh, and before we can do anything in this interval, we need to instantiate the face tracker. So we'll do const face tracker is new face tracker and we can pass in a distance if we want to it defaults to half a meter and i think that is sort of correct so we we don't pass in anything so now we need to initialize it so we do face tracker init and then we should be able to call the face tracker get face position 
and that returns a promise so we need to make this async and await this and then we can store it in just x and y variables here so let's do console log x and y i will say face pulls all right so now we can see if this works so if we look inside the face tracker here it will look for a video element with id video and then it will set the source object to the stream coming from the webcam so if we go here now we also need to use the f like to add the face position component to our index here so instead of main let's do face position like that and then import it okay so let's see what happened so now we see we get face position we always get zero and now we got the video tag and the web camera is actually streaming to this so now we can see on the recording that instead of the recording getting my camera we actually have the camera in here so we could just remove the video capture here because now you can see me inside the web browser instead so let's try to move my head and see if the face position updates so i move now to the left it will be mirrored to you so it looks like i'm moving to the right but this is my left i can see that the x coordinate is shrinking and if i go to the middle we have zero and if i go to the right i'm, I'm also becoming my, my sound becomes lower that's because i'm leaving the microphone but as i go to the right the x number goes higher and now let's also check the y axis which is this output here to the right if i go up we see the number goes up and if i go down the number goes down so now we have tensorflow face tracking working and we do it 60 times a second so this is a variable that we want to track in state because this is the variable we can use to to update some 3d uh, elements inside here we probably want to get the position out of this component and into the index so that we can pass it to another component that will render our 3d content so let's do a callback function here on new face position on new face position and that will be a function that takes a position that is a number array returns nothing because it will just set state so it will not return anything uh, and then we call this on new face position we pass in x and y and we also should take care of clearing our interval when we unmount this component so we return a function that calls clear interval of interval like that and now we have a dependency here on the new face position there we go so now we need to pass this function also so here we set up some state const face position set face position use state and we'll default it to zero zero on new face position should be a function and we get in the pos here so here we just want to set face position to the incoming position great so now we can create our 3d component that takes in a face position face position or 3f and let's create this component it takes in face position and that's a number array and we want to return a canvas should be the outermost one and that canvas comes from should be at react 3 fiber let's set a height to this canvas we can do 480 because i think that's the vertical resolution of uh, the webcam we need first to have some ambient light intensity 
do 0 0.5. Let's build the cube. So we'll do a mesh and the mesh should have a box geometry and a mesh standard material. Let's give it a color. We can do hot pink. We should set a size for this box in three dimensions. First, let's see if we actually get a box. R3F is not defined. Did I save it? All right, I saw the box. But we get on new face position is not a function inside of face position. On new face position. Position. On new face. Position. On new face position. All right. All right, now we have the cube. And we also have some insane things going on. And the only thing that changes is this state here. And the only component that uses that state is the R3F. So we see that the face position effect is running all the time, which makes the face tracker reinitialize. And that is not good. So what we need to do is make sure that the face position is not reinitialized because it should only be initialized once. So we can put a memo around that component. And let's go into face position and wrap it in memo. So we'll do memo around it. The second parameter is a function that will, it returns whether the props are equal or not. So if I say that the props are always equal, it should just render once and then not keep re-rendering. Yes, now we, we are stable. So now if we inspect the console, so now we see the face position effect runs and then we just get the face position callbacks. So now we are stable. And we have our cube, so let's continue working with the React 3 Fiber component. So the cube is a bit small, so we can add some scaling to it. Scale to 3. Yes, now we're a lot bigger. Uh, we're going to work with the rotation of this. Uh, from the face position output. We do 0, 0, 0, and then let's see. I want to look from the cube from a diagonal from the start. So let's try this, math dot pi divided by 4. So now we rotated it, but now we can't really see that there are two separate sides to the cube because we only have the ambient light. So we have no good shadows on this. So let's add a spotlight to get some uh, some nice lighting position let's set 10 10 10 and angle 0 0.15 and penumbra to 1 so now we got some nice shading right so now we only have the best step left and that is to implement the face position in the rotation of this cube this uh, middle part here, the Y part, that is one of the rotations that we want the X coordinate. Uh, to, so let's do const X and Y is equal to face pos. So let's do plus X. So now when I move my head, we should see that the cube actually moves. So now it looks really cool for me. Wow, I feel like it's a 3D thing I'm looking at actually. It's really, really cool. Oh, wow. Uh, but I would like, it actually moves in the, it actually moves in the wrong way. And I, I would like it to move a little bit more. So to get the correct way, we just flip this sign and then we'll, let's multiply it by a factor. All right. Wow, now it's, this is some immersive stuff. All right, so I can already tell it's not following up and down. So let's add that. So I think it should be this X one. We'll just set Y here. All right. Yes, now it's actually following up and down as well and the correct direction, but it's doing a bit too little. So let's add a factor to this as well. Let's try two. Yeah, that's that's better. 
So now I feel like I can actually look around this cube. Like this cube actually knows where I'm looking from. So it's not like a static 3D environment. It's actually, it's actually really weird. I would love to build a portfolio site like this. People would be like, what the heck is going on here? But I like it probably. You could even have your HTML elements with drop shadows floating a little bit above the background. And as you move your face, you see that all oh, this flat style website is actually in 3D. And even if you would incorporate some 3D elements using 3 or React 3 Fiber, you could have those follow the face in really amazing ways. You could glue the face to the actual camera object inside of 3. And then as you move around, I think you would get some crazy effects. So use that in your portfolio and then see if you get some jobs. And then report back to me. All right, so that's the gist of it. And of course, this is only the proof of concept, the prototype. If you end up using it, please send me a link. I would love to try it out. And I hope you learned something or got some inspiration. So happy that you watched all to the end. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Helps a lot. Also like the video. That would make me very happy. Thank you for this and I'll see you in the next video.